Okay, so tonight we're diving deep into a case that's kind of legendary in UFO circles. Um, the Val Johnson incident. Ever heard of it? Oh, absolutely. It's one of those cases that really grabs you. Yeah, it's 1979, right? Rural Minnesota. And you've got this deputy sheriff, Val Johnson, on patrol when things take a very weird turn. And we're not just talking about some vague lights in the sky here. Johnson's patrol car was found damaged. He had physical injuries. And to this day, no one can fully explain what happened. And that's the thing that makes this case so fascinating. You've got this well-respected law enforcement officer, someone trained to observe and report, at the center of it all. Right. It's not like he was some UFO chaser out looking for a story. This was a seasoned officer just doing his job. So before we get into the theories and speculation, let's set the scene. What exactly did Johnson experience that night? Okay, so Johnson is on routine patrol, driving down a dark highway outside this town, Warren, Minnesota. It's late, probably pretty quiet, and then bam, he sees this intensely bright light appear in front of him. Like, out of nowhere. Apparently, yeah. He described it as this blinding white light, almost like a ball of pure energy. And get this, according to Jonathan's testimony, this light actually struck his patrol car. Wait, struck it? Like a collision? A collision. Now, when I say struck, I don't mean a near miss or a glancing blow. He claimed this thing hit his car head on in the aftermath. His car is found damaged, spun around completely, at a good distance from the road. It's wild. So we're talking actual physical damage here, not just, oh, I saw something strange kind of thing. What kind of damage were we talking about? Was it like anything, you know, investigators had seen before? That's the real head scratcher. The damage to the car was real and whatever caused it definitely made an impact, but investigators couldn't figure out what could have done it. No paint transfer, no debris from another vehicle, nothing that really added up. Okay, but the car damage is only part of it, right? Didn't Johnson have some pretty weird injuries from this whole thing? That's where it goes from a strange incident to like, whoa, what if something really was out there? Yeah, the injuries are a major part of why this case gets so much attention. Johnson said he had burns, like around his eyes. And he was convinced it was from that intense light he saw. I mean, how bright does a light have to be to cause actual burns? Exactly. And there wasn't any other heat source, right? It's not like he was near a fire or anything. This was just light. And what about, wasn't there something about his wristwatch stopping too? I vaguely remember that being part of the story. That's a detail that always gets me. Yeah. His watch stopped working, supposedly right when the light hit his car. Now, that could just be coincidence, of course. But it, it fits into the whole, like, high strangeness of the event. Exactly. And it also makes you think about electromagnetic interference, right? Which is something that comes up a lot in UFO reports. Huh. So we've got a trusted witness, car damage that's hard to explain, this crazy bright light, the burns, the watch thing. What did the official investigations make of all this? Did they actually come to any conclusions? You'd think with all that they'd have figured it out, wouldn't you? But no. This is where the Val Johnson incident gets even more, I don't know, frustrating. Frustrating for who, though? For everyone. Investigators, researchers, even people who just hear the story casually. Because they looked at the car, they questioned Johnson, but the official conclusion, unexplained. Seriously, so they just threw their hands up? Basically. They ruled out some things, which is important. I mean, it wasn't a case of mistaken identity or anything like that. So not a normal plane, no weather weirdness, no one messing around? Right. None of the usual suspects. Yeah. Whatever happened to Val Johnson that night is truly a mystery. So where does that leave us? If the authorities are stumped, I guess it's time to look at some of the, shall we say, less conventional explanations. Oh, ab absolutely. This is where things get really interesting. We're talking about the theories, and there are a lot of them, to try and explain the Val Johnson incident. Some are a bit more down to earth. Others, well, not so much. Let's hear them. Give me the rundown. Okay, so on the more conventional end, you've got the idea that it was a misidentified aircraft of some kind, maybe yeah. a military plane, something experimental they didn't want people knowing about. Right. Secret government stuff, always a classic. Then you've got your natural phenomena explanations, which are always fun. Paul Lightning gets thrown around a lot or maybe some weird atmospheric effect no one's documented before. But I think we both know what everyone's really thinking when they hear this story, don't we? Aliens. Yeah, aliens. I mean, it's got all the ingredients, right? It does make you wonder. I mean, a case like this with so many unexplained elements and a credible witness, mm -hmm. it, it's hard not to at least consider the possibility, right? So should we like analyze each of these theories and see if any of them hold water? Let's do it. Let's start with that misidentified aircraft idea. Could it have just been a case of mistaken identity? 
I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? It could have been a plane with its lights on and Johnson, I don't know, he panicked or something, misinterpreted what he was seeing. It's definitely the explanation that requires the least stretching of the imagination. But when you look at the details, it starts to fall apart. First off, there were zero reports of any unusual aircraft in the area that night. And we're talking about rural Minnesota, right? Not exactly a busy airport zone. Exactly. If a plane was flying around there, especially acting weird or off course, someone would have noticed. Plus, if it was a plane, wouldn't the damage on Johnson's car look different? You'd expect to see more evidence of what hit it, right? Yeah. Like you were saying before, some paint transfer, maybe some debris, something identifiable. But there was nothing like that. It's like whatever hit the car just disappeared. Okay, so misidentified aircraft, probably not. What about those natural phenomena theories? You mentioned ball lightning earlier, right? That's mm -hmm. always kind of spooky. Ball lightning is definitely one of those weird phenomena that makes you wonder what's really going on in the atmosphere. You talk about this ball of electricity, glows brightly, can move in strange ways. It's not something that's fully understood by science. I swear I saw that in a movie once. Probably. It's a popular one for sci-fi. <laughs> but here's the thing. Ball lightning usually doesn't last very long. We're talking seconds, maybe a minute at most. It's also unpredictable. So you're saying it's not going to be hanging around long enough to cause that kind of damage to a car? And the light Johnson described, it was there for a while, right? Long enough to follow him and then collide with the car. It's not really adding up. Right, right. Okay, so no to ball lightning. What about like a meteor? A meteor, huh? Well, meteors can definitely pack a punch when they hit. We know that. Okay. But again, it's the details that don't quite fit with the Val Johnson case. Meteors are usually associated with streaks of light as they burn up in the atmosphere, right? Not so much a single stationary light source. Okay, that makes sense. I guess that pretty much exhausts our list of usual suspects, doesn't it? It seems we've hit a bit of a dead end with the conventional explanations. And when you've ruled out the explainable... You're left with the unexplainable. Exactly. And in the case of the Val Johnson incident, that unexplainable element is, of course, the possibility of an extraterrestrial encounter. It's hard to avoid that conclusion, isn't it? I mean, we've gone through it all. We've got a trustworthy witness, someone who doesn't strike me as the type to make stuff up. We've got damage to his car that no one can explain. And then there are those injuries, the watch. It all feels very, I don't know, X-Files, you know. But even if we say, OK, maybe, just maybe, it was aliens. What were they doing there? buzzing a deputy sheriff in rural Minnesota, like, what's the purpose? That's the big question, isn't it? The why of it all. And unfortunately, with a case like this, we might never know for sure. There are plenty of theories, of course. Some people think events like this are evidence that we're being observed by extraterrestrial intelligence. Like we're the interesting ones in the cosmic zoo. Something like that. <gasps> Others think it might have something to do with things we don't understand yet, like dimensional portals or maybe some kind of technology so advanced it seems like magic to us. So we're left with more questions than answers. That's often the case with these kinds of mysteries. But isn't that part of what makes them so fascinating? They challenge us to think beyond what we think we know, to consider possibilities outside our everyday experience. It definitely makes you think twice about taking a late night drive on a deserted road, that's for sure. What started out as a normal night for Val Johnson, just another patrol, turned into something truly strange, something that continues to baffle and intrigue people to this day. It's a reminder that the universe is full of mysteries, and sometimes the most honest answer is simply, we don't know. And that's it for this deep dive. We'll be back next week with another look into the unexplained. Until then, keep looking up and stay curious.